What's going on guys, my name is David Tomich and welcome back to the channel. Now this is part two of two of this video. If you missed part one, make sure you go back and check out part one first because that dives into exactly how we designed and documented this building before we bring it into twin motion. So we've completed our architectural model in Archicad. We're gonna open up, show all 3D, and go back into our 3D model. As you can see, we've completed all of the architecture and we're gonna take it straight into Twin Motion. So what we're gonna do is go up to Twin Motion and go direct link. Once Twin Motion opens up, you're just gonna go into a new project, click OK, and let it synchronize and do its thing. Straight away, we're gonna see a few issues against our image in the background. First of all, the background itself is completely wrong. So we're gonna go down to settings, location, background, city, mountains and there we go straight away we've got our mountains happening in the background if we drop down a little bit we can probably rotate that to about 20 percent to have the peaks over here if not even more uh, 85 percent looks really good we have that peak right there just like they do the surface itself i think is a little bit too high so we're going to go minus three to drop that three meters below our building we're gonna open up the panel on the left hand side to change this starting ground from whatever these brick pavers are to water. So my recommendation is materials, scroll all the way down, water, pool two, and straight away we're now starting to look a lot more like this image because we're hovering above some water. It is a lot more crystal clear and blue, but we'll come back to the image once we set up our actual Instagram shot of this as well. So working on the actual building itself before we get into the context, we wanna change the material of this wood. Simply by going into wood, I would select IPA, IPEA and change the color straight to gray and go into more rotation 90% so now we're starting to look a lot more like the image on the left hand side we want to come out of wood go back into metal go brushed aluminium on these eye beams and change the color somewhere down the bottom near the black it's not too important just so it isn't black per se the concrete itself inside is a lot darker so we're going to come back out go into concrete and select fine concrete. Fine concrete slab gives us that nice dark black base. It's probably a little bit too dark, so we'll just lighten it that tiny, tiny bit. And most of our interior is already done. We do want to start creating something nicer inside. So I do think that we need some bookshelves, some better furniture and little bits and pieces. So to replicate what we see in the image on our left, we're gonna go into object, home, living room, storage, and probably use this shelf here. So I'm gonna rotate that 90 degrees and bring it right next to that bed. Now it doesn't touch the ceiling in this instance. So we're gonna tab through these settings and these arrows here and go 1.25 to drag it all the way to the ceiling. We're still not quite there yet. So if we undo, go 1.3, a little bit too high, 1.27 should be perfect. Now I'm also gonna replicate that one more time because that bookcase does extend the whole way along the bed. So by dragging that arrow, pressing the shift key simultaneously, we can duplicate this. So I do want an instance of that and I'm gonna change the material as well. To change the material of any object, you just come all the way to the start of this palette on the left-hand side, open up your materials, select the material that you're looking for. Me, for instance, I want plywood, um, probably twice the scale and a little bit more orange, a little bit more warm compared to what it is now. I do also wanna use that plywood for the kitchen and the bed as well. The bed unfortunately doesn't have any linen on it. It is a little bit basic. So we are gonna replace it with a twin motion bed. Going all the way into our objects and beds, we could go back into Archicad, delete this bed and drop a new one in. So if we wanted to do that, you just go into Archicad, find your bed. So click it, 
delete, twin motion, direct link again, and it will synchronize and completely remove that bed. So now we can drop a brand new bed somewhere in its place there. Use that plywood again on the bottom. Select the material pickup so we can change the color of the doona to white like it is in the image and throw that on the rest of the bed as well. So pretty quickly we're starting to replicate that image. We have the shelves, we have the bedding, we just don't have the chairs. I don't think Twinmotion has any chairs even close to that. So if we go all the way back out, objects, home, living room, chairs, we can have a look at what Twin Motion has. Again, it definitely doesn't have anything similar, but I guess any chair will really do. It will be a placeholder more than anything. So I'm gonna use these ugly red chairs. Bear with me for a second, because I'll use those chairs, take this material picker, select that plywood again, and give it a plywood chair look. So now I can also drag that in a better position, hold shift, to replicate it and rotate it minus 90 degrees so those two chairs face each other. Now our bed is sticking out a tiny little bit through the glass. So I'm gonna just move it a little bit back in towards the shelf. I think the last thing we really have to do for the interior of this building itself is just place a human in the corner. So if we go back out to our library, go to characters, I just want a posed human for this instance. And I think the best option in this case isn't really going to be identical to that image but I think this image of father and daughter very lovely together overlooking the water would be quite nice so I'm going to place these two right into the corner of this suite they look very happy they look like they're having a blast so that is probably an even nicer photo than what we have on the left hand side now obviously our building is very much so floating in mid-air, so we wanna create some context so it doesn't look ridiculous. The best thing to do, go back out all the way, go into, uh, go into vegetation and landscaping rocks, and use rock 14. Now I know that looks like a cliff, but we're gonna tab through that again and reduce that to 0.5 in scale bring it down into the water, rotate it as we see fit. So now we're just gonna bring it in front of our building here as best as we can, lowering it, adjusting it however we need to so it looks like that building is floating off the edge. So now looking at it from a low angle, it does look like that rock face is all the way across. What we're gonna do again is simply hold shift and replicate a copy of it. This time I'm gonna rotate it a bit on its axis so it falls away from the water and isn't directly as sharp as the last one. So by simply rotating and playing with the settings, we can have that rock face fall away however we want. In this instance, it's falling away into the water something along those lines and we're having a very similar cascading effect like we have on the image itself. Now to make sure this doesn't look like it's just floating in thin air, one more thing that I like to do is take rock 14, rotate it 90 degrees and use it as an actual base. So I'll bring that over and underneath this building here, bring it up a little bit and bring it in so it looks like we have a base over here and then I'll copy a couple of these across so we again have some more rocks and some more ground to actually play with. So there is my cliff face that I'm gonna be using. Now we can still see one small little rock under that beam over there. So if I fly closer to this building and drop rock nine directly under it without losing it completely, I'm gonna to have to scale up that rock to about three. And there we go, we have a nice rock sitting underneath that beam there. Okay, so now that we have everything set up for the context, unfortunately, the downside of having this object is you can't actually paint on some grass. So we're gonna lose that grass effect in this image, but that's okay. 
we're gonna start setting up our actual Instagram export. So if we go into media, go image and create new, it doesn't matter where you create it because we're about to mess with some settings. We're gonna go into more, format more and change these two dimensions to 4,000 by 5,000. I know it still looks funny, bear with me, back into image one, into camera and change field of vision from 90 to 18. We're also gonna drop the vignetting while we're here and we're gonna go back into image one, zoom out as best as we can and now try line up what we see in that Instagram photo on the left. So I think if we line up the edge of that window as best as we can, the man is standing about halfway through the water in the mountains in the background and the sun is peeking through that spot there. Somewhere about there is probably about right. So we're gonna recapture that image, go into more, go into location again and change these time settings as best as we can to try to replicate that sun peeking through that window. Now, Twin Motion is going to have a fit if we do put the sun through the window, so we're going to just try poke it just to the right hand side of it. Okay, so I found the perfect settings are 620 June and 78 North offset, but because it's obviously blaring right through that screen, you can't really do anything about it. I'm going to push it to about 80 degrees offset, so it's just here. And maybe if I play with that a little bit more, we might be able to get a more consistent setting. But I think these settings overall for this situation work quite well. What you will see is it is a lot lighter and a lot more blue compared to the natural scene we have right now. So if we come back into image, go back to more and adjust our lighting settings, we can drag our white balance all the way to the bottom to get that light bright feeling coming through similar to what they have over here if we want to bring this out in twin motion and not take it into lightroom i still am going to take it into lightroom in this tutorial just to get the most out of this image but we come back into lighting go into settings and bring up the ambient all the way so we can actually start seeing this detail here and inside the building as well what i do want to change before we go any further is the color of this water so at the moment you can see it's that dark blue but we wanna make it that kind of icy, frosty, light blue like they have over here in this image. So these are kind of the settings that I think work for the time being. It's probably a little bit darker and a little bit more blue, but that works for now. Now what we can see is in the background, our mountains are a little bit too nice and clear, whereas they have quite a bit of fog. So if we go back to our media more and go into weather, we can go into effects and adjust our smog so we can just see that mountain fading out in the background. We can add it quite heavy, which I actually really like that, but that's not the vibe we're going for in this image. So we'll bring that down to about 55% I think works well in this instance. So now overall, I think our image is ready to export. There isn't too much left that we have to do. We could potentially drop in a little small boat in the background. So if we go vehicles, boats, um, let's see what small boats we have. They're all quite large and absurd. But if we chuck a small little inflatable boat in the background, somewhere about there, we have something very similar to what they have in their image as well. So I'm gonna quickly go file, save as, so I don't have any issues with exporting. I highly recommend you save many times throughout this because Twin Motion is notorious for crashing, unfortunately. So this image is pretty much finished in Twin Motion, and we're going to export it by simply going to Export, Image, Image 1, Export, straight to the desktop in this instance. Okay, so that took an absurd amount of time to export, and it just kept crashing continuously, but we finally managed to export it out. And this is our image before we take it into Lightroom. So the comparison on the right hand side here with the cliff on the edge, the water, the mountains in the background, we're getting quite close. I think the color grading is off is what's really throwing these images off. So we'll minimize this one here and open up Lightroom. Okay, so now we have our image imported into Lightroom and we're gonna go over to the develop tab. I've already imported all of my presets directly into Lightroom, so it makes it a hell of a lot easier just to change all of these settings very quickly. 
If you want to check out the presets, there is a link down in the description. They're incredibly cheap and they just help me out as a creator. So I think personally, the perfect setting for this is autumn external. Straight away, we get those nice blue colors coming in. We don't really have to touch too much. If we drag that back to the side window and open up this on the left, we can see that the colors are quite similar. The blues of the water is quite similar. The boat's there, the sun's coming in, the sky is very similar. And all we did was activate that preset very quickly to get all that information out of that image extremely quickly. And there we go guys, that is the completed process, taking that Instagram image that we found online into ArcCAD 24, modeling it completely, and then bringing it over into Twinmotion. Finally, we exported it into Lightroom to be able to color grade it and make those scenes match as much as possible. But now we have a phenomenal image that is very similar to the one we saw online. If you enjoyed this video today, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And as always, I will see you next Monday. Now, I just want to take a quick little break here and a quick pause to mention something very exciting on this channel. This channel has been growing phenomenally well over the past couple months as I'm producing more and more architecture content and you guys are loving it. So thank you so much for being a part of this community and helping this channel grow. Because of all of your support, I've been able to reach out to one of my premium brands that I love working with. So if you look at my past 12 months of videos, if not even longer, you'll notice that I'm always wearing a black shirt. And most of the time, if not 99% of the time, it's more than likely a cut shirt. I've been wearing cuts for a good year and they've genuinely been the best shirts I've ever purchased in my life. So I decided to reach out to them and see if they were willing to partner up on this channel to be able to help me produce better and better content every day. So if you're in the market for the highest quality shirts in the game that are just so buttery and soft and smooth, and the second you put them on, you know they are absolute premium quality, there's a link down in the description below. If you don't want to or you're not in the market, that's absolutely okay. I just genuinely appreciate you guys being on this channel, learning and producing better architecture.